Hi, this presentation actually depends on a couple others, so if you haven't watched them, you can click here to see Advertising is War, that troubling word, consumer, our role as consumers, and what consumerization is. If you'd like to see the whole thing strung together, follow the narrative, click on that bottom link. It should be live in the YouTube video. If companies that advertise are busy stretching the truth all the time, not quite telling us what's going on or being disconnected from what's actually going on, if they keep calling us consumers uh, in other terms of disrespect, if they go to war on us all the time using the language of a military campaign to try to sell us stuff, uh, and when they're not doing that, they treat us like cattle, busy driving eyeballs to websites and branding us. They're also filling our world with noise where there are ads on everything and everyone, and there's even sort of aroma ads and sound ads, and every kind and variety of sense is used, including now uh, neural advertising, where they're trying to figure out what's, you know, how to fill our minds with uh, those ideas. But when they're not doing that, they're busy scraping up all the data around us, buying and selling it, and stalking us, using that data with uh, deep analytics to figure out what things they might do to us so that we might actually loosen our wallets a little more and buy some stuff. Uh, in the process, they often deny mistakes and wrongdoing. Uh, happens all the time. And really often don't listen or engage. There, there's a whole category of software called listening platforms that, that are often outsourced to third parties. Let's, let's hire some people in some other country where labor is, is cheaper. Uh, and have them listen to people who are angry at our company and then interrupt and post and try to fix or erase those things from online. Uh, there's a whole other category about uh, engagement, customer engagement. Uh, there's also customer relationship management. None of these things really are about deep listening and understanding people. So if, if advertising companies are busy doing all these things and, and kind of all of them at once, why should we trust them? Why should anybody trust them? And I'm operating from the assumption here that trust is really important for commerce. That's really my starting place. And I'm looking at all of these things. I'm just kind of doing a close read of the language of advertising, for example. I'm looking around the world at how it's been filled with advertisements over everything. I'm looking at how all this new data is causing uh, companies to just go stalk us. And they're not really thinking two or three times about it. So why should we trust them? What's happened is that we are now peers in the marketplace that there used to be the relationship of producers to consumers, where the producers were above and the consumers were below, and the producers had uh, unique and only access, monopolized access, to the means of communication, to mostly the broadcast media. That's when we sort of perfected the advertising model. And ordinary humans couldn't talk back. You would write a letter to the editor and it would show up three weeks later on not on the, on the front page of the paper, right? How does that work? Well, that, that's all changed right now, and now Companies that are smart need to figure out again how to be in relationship with those people who buy their things, whether it's products or services. I think this marks a rehumanization of capitalism, which ought to be really exciting, but might be really um, panic striking. Who knows? So instead of doing all the things that I mentioned a moment ago, what if companies were transparent and trustworthy, if they acted trustworthy, didn't just say trust me, if they were vulnerable, which is actually the path to authentic connection and to fixing things that are broken, if they listened with care and then served with whole heart, uh, as opposed to just trying to make more money uh, show up out of your pockets, if they admitted their errors and corrected them quickly, and then maybe much more importantly, found and communicated their deeper purpose. What is that? And one of the ways they can communicate their deeper purpose is to take care of the commons that they touch, whether it's uh, aquifers and fresh water or soil health or inf the information commons, whatever it might be, to mind the commons with us as opposed to just mining the commons, which is what they're doing today. Uh, I think all of this means uh, being human. And in fact, if this list sounds suspiciously like how to be a good trusted friend, uh, you are right. Because when that arrow goes from being up, down, and one way, producers to consumers, and going almost level but not quite, to being peers in the arena, then organizations need to figure out how to, be, how to act as trusted peers. And that's at least the ante for the next wave of existing in the world, the next wave of marketing, the next wave of strategy, the next wave of product design, all these sorts of things. I'm Jerry Mikulski. Uh, I start. I ran something. I run something called the Relationship Economy Expedition. Uh, thank you for watching this Rexcast. There are more bits of information and parts of this at the links on this page.